Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about homeschooling in the state of Wyoming and we're going to try to cover a variety of subjects. And one of the things is if you need legal help or you have legal concerns, you can join the HSLDA and I think it's only 10 or $12 a month and you can check on their website to see any updates for the laws for homeschooling in the state of Wyoming. And right now it says that you need to submit your curriculum to the public school district every year. And it talks about doing that. And it says that you must teach the required subjects and it tells you what those are. And then it talks about homeschooling as a church or religious school and then it has that information as well. So it looks pretty simple. And this is the WDE Wyoming.gov site Opportunity Through Education and it talks of they have a this one area that talks about homeschooling and there's contact information. And it talks about what a home edu based education program means. And it gives you the laws and you might want to print this out and put this in your portfolio or your binder so that you have that information. And it talks about failing to submit it, so. And it has frequently asked questions, which you also might want to print out and put in your portfolio or binder. And if you're keeping a portfolio or binder, some of the things you might want to keep in there, if you're giving them a placement test at the beginning of the year, um, uh, state homeschool laws, copies of any forms filed, a couple of calendars for attendance records, when you brainstorm your favorite resources, you might want to put that in your portfolio or your binder. Your actual list of resources you're going to use. A list of any field trips you plan on taking. Print out from contents like web pages like IXL or workbooks to show the curriculum and the list of activities they're going to be doing throughout the year. A sample student work and you might want to have your students have their own portfolio or binder and you have one and they might want to showcase their best work where you might want to show progressive work or a variety of skills. Um, proof of any field trips taken, a leaflet, a flyer with a date written on it, a photo, a video. Maybe you want to have your students write a paper on it or draw a picture or do a craft and mention the field trip it was about and put the date on it. A weekly schedule. Maybe you're going to create a weekly schedule and maybe you're going to teach them certain subjects. Maybe they're going to be using like IXL or Khan Academy for two or three hours a day and then working on a complete curriculum workbook for an hour a day. Maybe you're going to have a free period where they get to go online and choose what they want to learn about. Or maybe you're going to have like 4-H home ex on Wednesdays after lunch where they learn different things like um, candle making, cooking, making jelly, leather crafts, tie dyeing, making yarn dolls, uh, birdhouses, just whatever. Maybe Fridays after lunch you're going to be playing board games or having them reading their magazine subscriptions they get that are history and science and you can put that in your schedule just whatever you decide to create your schedule with I would personally recommend maybe in my opinion that you use like 60 to 65 percent of the time be their main core subjects but you got to make sure it's creative and it's fun and they enjoy learning um, your daily log of activities you might want to take a notebook and carry it with you and write down like day one or day two or day three, whatever day it is, the date, the time, the subject, the name of the website or the workbook they're working in and the activity that they're doing within that subject. And then the last period of the day, you might want to put the time it starts and the time it ends. So you have that and you might want to type it up into a WordPad document and email it to yourself and print it out every now and then and put it in your portfolio or binder. That is one of the things you will love having years from now to look back on. If you have them do self-evaluations where they tell you where they're struggling, if they need more time in certain subjects, um, what they feel they're excelling in, you might want to put that in there. If you're doing an assessment, even if it's every six to eight weeks in each subject or at the end of the year, 
in each subject, you might want to put that in there. Use a positive spin. Maybe help them, have them help you with this. Um, if they're struggling with their reading, you might want to put their behind in the reading and they have a positive attitude. And at the end of the year, you could put they went up five reading levels in one year. And it, a lot of it probably had to do with the fact that they had such a positive attitude and they work so hard. If you give them a standardized test every year, you might want to put that in there volunteer work, if they do that, you might want to get some sort of certificates or paper written and put those in the portfolio binder, especially if they're going to college or they're going to join the military, you might need that. If they take classes outside of the home, whether it's art classes, uh, swimming classes, um, any sorts of classes outside of the home, martial arts, anything, you might want to get somebody to fill out a form on that and put that in your portfolio binder. Um, your contacts with email addresses and phone numbers for the school that you send your records to and your homeschool support groups. If you take them to do career study field trips, maybe you're going to get to tour a hospital and you've talked to someone and you get to talk to workers in different areas and you can get your students to create a list of questions on the education they needed, their daily activities what kind of skills they needed, if they have to have problems solving skills or maintaining schedules or do presentation or just whatever. And then you can have them write a paper on that. See if you can do audio or video footage and you can take the paper that your students write about that and their list of questions and put that in your portfolio or binder. Maybe you're going to go to a hotel and you've made arrangements to talk to different workers there. Or uh, maybe you're just going to go to a veterinarian's office or a local factory. You can check your chamber of commerce for ideas, maybe. And then you can keep that in your portfolio or binder. And that might help them choose a career, understand the education they need. It might just help them with interviews later and their communication skills. And you can put things like that in your portfolio or binder. I think Michael's has online arts and crafts classes. So there's a lot of things they can do. Maybe for PE, you're going to do play they're going to learn to play tennis or golf, or they're just going to go bowling or swimming or take Zumba classes or yoga classes. It's just some ideas because you want to make it a fun learning experience. And this is a frequently asked questions and I'm not going to read all this to you, but I will scroll down. You can pause the video to read it or you can print it out if you like. Maybe you want to print this out the date that you printed it out and put it in your portfolio or binder so that you have it. Having a portfolio or a binder is mostly, it's just a fun keepsake for you and your child to look back on this time and take pride in. This is a website that has assessment and placement tests. You, there's different ones on the internet, but I like this one. And I think these assessment tests are so if you're buying their books, but I'm going to show you one of their assessment tests so you can print it out at the beginning of the school year. It's not like a standardized test. It's just so you can see if the students need to review certain subjects. If they're making simple mistakes, you'll notice that. Or you can tell what level they're on. So you can come up with a plan of what you're going to teach them throughout the year. Maybe they're not on the same level as math or reading. Some students soar through one subject and take a bit longer on another one. This is another one that has assessment tests, so you can check this out. And if your local school district requires an assessment test every year, they're not meeting this one. They're meeting the standardized tests usually, but this is just to help you create a plan of what you want to teach them throughout the year. And this website, I love this one because when you're trying to create a list of what you need to homeschool, maybe you've never homeschooled before, or you're trying to brainstorm your favorite resources and your favorite books or what you're going to use to homeschool. Maybe Fridays after lunch, you're going to be playing board games like Scategories and Scrabble and Monopoly, which you can put under the subjects that they deal with. Maybe they're going to be reading history or science magazines Friday after lunch. You can create these lists of what you have and what you're going to use. You can create your list of your ideas for field trips or their guided instruction so that you have that, your online favorite curriculum websites. And then you can create another list of the ones you're actually going to use for the year. And then you can look back 
on the other ones halfway through the year or next year to see if there's other ones of your favorites you want to use and find those favorites in your portfolio or binder. And from there, you can use that to help you create a schedule. And then you can put your schedule in a portfolio or a binder. And this is an attendance record. You can see where I got it in the upper left-hand corner if you want to try to type that in. Or you can search, do a Google search for it. But they have free wins. Even free calendars with boxes you can find online or print off. but Or you can just draw one up on a piece of typing paper, a notebook paper, put it in your portfolio or binder. I would suggest you have two of them. One for the days that you think you might have school, or you plan to have school, field trips and holidays. But even the public school has snow days and things come up. So then you might want a second one for the days that you end up actually having school. And this is IXL, and what I like about this website is you can see when you go to print up the curriculum and put it in your portfolio or binder that this is what it looks like. Or you can just write it down on notebook paper what it is and put it in there. And if you're creating a daily log of activities, you might want to put... You can see the activity for even or odd or skip counting puzzles or writing numbers and words. So if you're doing day one, day two, day three, whatever the day is, that way you can tell the number of days you've, you've homeschooled them without having, and there's proof of it. And then you put the date, you put the time, you put the subject, you put the name of your workbook or website like ixl.com, math, you know, and then you put the activity would be even or odd for the first day, and the second day would be even or odd arithmetic rules, and the third day might be skip counting unless they're doing a few pages. Maybe they're doing two pages and and you're just putting even and odd because they did the two pages for one day and skip counting for the next day because that's what they did. So that will help you to do that. And this is Khan Academy, and it is complete curriculum free for everyone, everywhere. It goes from pre-K all the way up to college, and it even has life skills. So if you want to use the life skills, and you might want to use IXL for math and Khan Academy for life skills and reading, you can. it's up to you. You don't have to do it all from one website if you don't want to. And this is all in one homeschool, and it's another free curriculum that they take you to donate, but you can click cancel and get it for free. And it has Bible you have to do it separately, but if you want to begin the day with Bible while you're homeschooling, you can do that. And they take you, they use different websites on this one. For one might be for math. You might go to one website for math one day and one another one for math another day. And reading on another website and history at another website. So it's great fun to use this one. And it looks really cool in your daily log of activities. And you can see if you love that one. This is Schoolhouse Rock. I wanted to mention it. It's not complete curriculum. It's just fun to add to your day. Maybe you've heard of it. But it includes grammar, science, economics, history, mathematics, and civics. So it, it, it touches a variety of subjects. And you can find free videos on YouTube playlists that people have. Hopefully they still have them. This is the subject. You can see it teaches multiplication tables. They sing along. They memorize the songs. Sometimes they remember them. They might learn them when they're young and remember them in elementary school, throughout middle school and high school. And some of them remember them even when they're old. The parts of speech. And then they have... America Rock, which teaches about the Constitution and branches of government, Declaration of Independence, and other things. There's Science Rock, there's Money Rock that teaches them about finances, and Earth Rock, which is more science. So there's so many things that they learn about. Maybe you want to make lunch and you want them to sing the songs while you're making lunch and enjoy it so that you have a break. Or maybe they just need a break and they love it. It's just an excellent resource. And this is Bed Best Ed Lessons. And you can find a variety of resources here, including spelling word lists. And if you want to create your own activities, you can. Maybe you want them to um, write the definition of the words one day and synonyms another day and use the word in a sentence another day and give them quizzes throughout the week. So it's up to you. But you can find free spelling books here as well. They're from back in the day, but they have different exercises. You can check it out. This is an excellent website as well. Uh, this is for books. If you're looking for books and you don't want to go to the library, your house is already full of books, or it's snowing. <laughs> 
so there's like four or five thousand books here and you can click on a book it's easy you click on reading it and then you can click on the page you can turn the page to the right or the left in the upper right hand corner and when you do go to the library you might want to create a list of library skills you want them to learn maybe have the librarian help you with that and then give them a certificate of completion and put it in the portfolio or binder as well this is Mr. Nussbaum, and I love this website. Maybe you're giving them a free period during the day where they get to choose what they want to learn about. And Mr. Nussbaum has a lot of subjects. And maybe that free period will be within a subject, and you can write down the subject it's about after they choose what they want to learn about. Maybe you're even letting them choose if they want to write a paper or create a craft or draw a picture about what they learned about. And this has so many things that they can choose to learn and study for the day. I love this website. And you can see all the different things. And I like this. Maybe they want to learn about donuts. So then you want to get a can of biscuits and you can poke holes in them or twist them and fry them up for them and have them mix just a little dab of milk or water and powdered sugar that it, it waters down fast. So be careful. But you can make homemade donuts using canned biscuits and they are so good. Maybe you're going to study ice cream and then make sundaes. Maybe you're going to study about pizza and then make homemade pizza or study about soup and then make soup or study popcorn and then watch a movie and eat some popcorn. It's just great fun things to do on this website. You can you can come up with ideas for learning different things. So I love it. Maybe you want to go outside and you want to learn about the leaves or maybe you took them to the zoo and they want to learn about different animals. Maybe they want to go here and learn about birds and then draw a picture of a bird and put a date on it, put it in the portfolio and list it in your daily list of activities. So maybe they want to learn about the state of Wyoming. So this is just a great fun website because it has so much. And this is, it does say UK, but I love it because it has all these free workbooks that you can print out and yeah you got to pay to print them out and if you're printing them at home and you're buying the ink or buying a new printer every time because it might be even cheaper than buying ink it might cost you a bit to print them out but if you have a place where you can print them out for free it, it, it would be great or if you can go to a place that costs to print them out that's cheaper than printing them out at home it might be even better but you can see they have all these different workbooks and maybe you're good at drawing and you're just going to look at the workbooks and draw them from home and you just need the ideas. But I love this website. I think it's such an excellent resource for people. I, I know... I know some people when they were homeschooling back in the day, they'd go to the thrift store and they would get encyclopedias and they would get workbooks that people had written in and white them out or or find workbooks that hadn't even been hardly used or leftover school books that they found at the thrift store. And maybe they use those. Another great way to get books is if you join a homeschool support group, maybe they're sharing books that they use, or maybe you wanna donate books to another family, you could join a homeschool support group. And some of them cost money and some of them are free. Maybe they go on field trips and outings together. Maybe they meet at the park or Parks and Rec and use that or the local YMCA if there is one. And this might be another excellent resource for you to have because, see this one says art classes and field trips. So you can check it out and see if there's one locally to you. And that might help you with your homeschooling as well. Wyoming is, to me, it's one of my favorite states as far as the schools go. I love the schools in Wyoming. I love the teachers in Wyoming. I think the teachers in Wyoming are amazing. But sometimes people decide they want to homeschool. Maybe they're home already. They don't want to get out in the snow. They just want to sit by the fireplace during the day and, and homeschool. So, you know, if you decide you want to, though, you can, hopefully there's some things there that will help you with your homeschooling. 
and I'm a small YouTube channel and I greatly appreciate my viewers. If you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to leave those comments or suggestions. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching my video and I appreciate you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.